In this learning module, we will cover abdominal hysterectomy. This will be the ins and outs of an abdominal hysterectomy. Prior to surgery, we should familiarize ourselves with the surgical instruments we will be using. We have listed the basic instruments that you should anticipate needing for this procedure. However, based on surgeon preference, incision, and interoperative events, other instruments may be wanted or needed. Over time, you will develop your personal preference for instruments, but this is a good place to start. Now that we have familiarized ourselves with the instruments, we can turn our attention back to the patient. First and foremost, we will need to position and prep the patient. Possible options in positioning include dorsal low lithotomy position and dorsal supine position. Low lithotomy is preferred if one anticipates a periodic lymph node dissection, need for manipulation of the uterus, need for access to the bladder or pelvis for a urogynecological procedure, or anticipation of access to the rectum. In a teaching hospital, this also provides a nice place for the attending or fellow to stand and assist. Despite these benefits, dorsal supine may be preferred and should be considered if lymph nodes or pelvic access is not needed. This position minimizes strain and potential injury that may come with dorsal lithotomy position. Once we have positioned the patient, we will need to prep the patient. The vagina should always be prepped when performing a hysterectomy. The vagina is dirty and thus needs to be prepped. A Foley catheter should also be placed when performing an abdominal hysterectomy. The patient is positioned and prepped and we are ready to begin our surgery. We must first consider how we plan to enter the abdomen. The first option should be a vertical entry. We will go through this procedure in detail later. The benefits of this entry is it is quick, minimizes blood loss, allows extension and access to the upper abdomen, and provides adequate operative spaces. The disadvantage of this technique are increased postoperative pain, poor cosmetic result, and increased risk of hernia. We now have an adequate incision. In the case of a pelvic mass or any concerns for malignancy, pelvic washings with normal saline should be obtained. Next is the most important step that should not be forgotten, exploration. This should be done in a systematic fashion with exploration first of the upper abdomen, followed by running of the bowel, and finally exploration of the pelvis. After our exploration is complete, we should prepare our operative field for adequate exposure to the pelvic structures. Any adhesions that prevent you from adequately packing the bowel should first be lysed. Next, the book wall retractor should be placed. Abdominal wall retractors should be placed on the left and right sides of the incision. Now the bowel can be packed. Each surgeon has their preference on how this can be accomplished, but we prefer first packing a wadded up moist lap sponge in each pericolic gutter. Next, your hand, fanned out, will hold back the bowel while an open lap sponge with tip in the center will be placed over the top of your hand with the other hand. The back hand holding the bowel is then removed, leaving the open, open lap sponge directly against the bowel. The ends of the lap sponge are then tucked against the abdominal cavity. A large malleable retractor is then placed over the bowel and attached to the book walter. A second medium malleable retractor may be needed. Further wadded up lap sponges may be needed for adequate packing depending on the patient's body habitus. A bladder blade is finally placed. We can now begin the hysterectomy portion of the case. First, we identify the round ligament. An 8-inch peon clamp is placed at the cornua to aid in uterine retraction. Another clamp is placed on the contralateral side. The round ligament is then grasped and elevated with a Babcock clamp. Ovicral suture is then placed around the round ligament laterally. While grasping the proximal portion of the round ligament, the round ligament is incised with Bovi electrosurgery. A hemostat is placed on the suture of the round ligament to be used for retraction later. We now have easy access into the retroperitoneum. Entry into the retroperitoneum allows easy identification of the ureter as well as access to the pelvic lymph nodes. Thus, it is almost always done in cases of pelvic malignancy. In the benign setting, surgeons may opt not to open the retroperitoneum. After incising the round ligament, the peritoneum is further incised parallel to the IP extended cephalad. 
Next, we find the ureter, which is located on the medial leaf of the broad ligament. This can be accomplished by identifying the external iliac artery, gently walking your fingers along the artery in a cephalad direction until you reach the bifurcation. Once at the bifurcation, moving your hand medially will expose the ureter as it crosses the pelvic rim. Next, we will remove the adnexa. If you are not removing the adnexa, this step may be omitted and the adnexa removed at the level of the cornua from the uterus. To remove the adnexa, first grasp the IP with a Babcock clamp and gently elevate. Next, create a window with Bovi electrosurgery in the peritoneum below the IP but above the ureter. You have already identified these structures. The incision is then extended cephalad and caudal parallel to the IP. Ballantine clamps are then used to doubly clamp the IP through the window. Two Ballantine clamps will be placed proximal to the IP with one clamp facing in the opposite direction close to the uterus. Mayo scissors are then used to cut between the clamps. The IP pedicle is then suture ligated, first with a free tie, followed by removal of the back clamp with flashing of the remaining clamp. Suture ligation is then performed with a transfixion suture and the clamp is removed while tying and securing the suture. We now have a freed IP. The peritoneum below the IP in the ovary is then excised parallel to the floor with electrosurgery. You may suture ligate the uterine pedicle now. This is performed on both sides if possible and needed. This graphic depicts proper removal of the annexa. Now that we have freed the adnexa, we will focus on creating our bladder flap. The vesico-uterine peritoneum is first in size along the cervix with Metzenbaum scissors as shown. Next, the peritoneum is lifted anteriorly and the bladder is further dissected off the anterior cervix with blunt or sharp dissection. Remember, grasp farther from the cervix as farther from the cervix is better. Now we are almost ready to get the main supply of blood to the uterus, the uterine arteries. In order to maximize hemostasis, we must first skeletonize the uterine arteries. This involves removing any excess peritoneum. This is accomplished with DeBakey forceps and Bovi cautery or Metzenbaum scissors. Once skeletonized, you may clamp the uterine artery at the level of the internal cervical os. Place clamps on both the right and left uterine artery before cutting. If this is not possible, you may choose to place a straight back clamp to minimize bleeding. Mayo scissors can be used to cut the pedicle. The pedicle is then suture ligated with ovicral suture in a haney fashion or with placement of the suture at the tip and tying behind the clamp. We now must isolate and ligate the cervical branches of the uterine artery. This is accomplished with straight haney clamps with placement of each clamp medial to the previous stitch. Once a clamp is placed, you then cut medial to the clamp with either mayo scissors or a scalpel. Ovicral suture is used to secure the pedicles with placement of the suture at the tip of the clamp and tying behind the clamp. You will alternate with your assistant until you reach the vagina. During this process, continue to check the bladder and mobilize further if needed. Once you are at the level of the lower cervix, you are ready to place Zeppelin clamps and amputate the uterus. A maximally curved Zeppelin clamp is placed below the cervix on the right or left side, followed by a second maximally curved or less curved clamp on the opposite side. Jorgensen scissors are then used to amputate the uterus from the vagina. The specimen is handed off. Ovicral suture in a haining fashion is used to secure these pedicles, which include the uterosacral ligaments. You should tag these sutures with a hemostat. We will now close the vaginal cuff. This should be done with multiple figure of eight sutures with ovigral suture. Take care to avoid the bladder while suturing. Finally, you will close the abdomen. The bowel is retracted posteriorly with a fish retractor or a wide malleable retractor. OPDS suture is then used to close the incision, beginning at the cephalad portion done with an in mass closure. A second suture is started at the caudal portion and the sutures are tied in the middle of the incision. Staples will be used for skin closure.